In this guide I'm going to tell you all about how navy combat works, the ideal composition and navy templates that you should use, as well as which ships will fulfill which role. Navy is a bit more complicated to explain, so bear with me for a bit. I would like to just show you the perfect template here, but for that we first have to talk about ship roles, and for that we have to talk about ship designs, and... <sighs> To keep things brief, I put chapters into the video, so just feel free to use them. We're going to start off with the easiest way to get naval supremacy. This is with a stripped battleship. Currently, a battleship without any guns is the easiest way to get naval supremacy due to the manpower you can put out on a battleship and the calculation of manpower for naval supremacy. Granted, this thing is absolutely trash and a single gust of wind can kill that thing, but that doesn't really matter if you don't really care about navy and you don't want to bother with it and simply want to invade the UK. This is a dangerous ship to use since the AI can just intercept your invasion and then your army will be exploring the bottom of the sea. However, even this one will take some time, so if you decide in 1941 to invade the UK before the US joins, you'll be in for a long battle. Roles of ships and how battles work. There's four roles of ships. Number one, the screening ships, the capital ships, the submarines and the aircraft carriers. A ship's role is defined by the type of hull you use. The only exception to this rule is the cruiser. Depending on which type of main armament you use, the cruiser will either be a light cruiser or a heavy cruiser. An additional special rule is the battle cruiser and the battleship. Both are capital ships made from battleships. However, battle cruisers have a lighter armor and are thus cheaper. Light cruisers and destroyers are screening ships. They are cheap ships to protect your big and expensive boats. In Hoi 4 their most important stat is speed, although that's pretty much the most important stat for any boat, but for them even more so, so that they can dodge. You're going to lose a lot of them, but it doesn't really matter. They're cheap and only there to protect your big ships. Heavy cruisers, battleships and super heavy battleships are capital ships. They wield big guns and will deal most of your damage. Out of those the most expensive one is the super heavy battleship. This one just takes ages to build and is very slow as well as research but if you have one of these it will just grind the AI's navy to dust because they are so expensive they need to be protected. Aircraft carriers are the strongest type of ship but also incredibly expensive and also very fragile. They should always field as many naval bombers as possible and they should never go somewhere on their own. Once they are being fired at your navy should get the fuck out. They are not there to fight. They are there to support and then deal most of the damage, but they are not there to take hits. Submarines are, as the name implies, ships that act below the surface of the sea. They are usually used to intercept convoys and should not be used in shallow sea, like the English Channel, because of the visibility debuff. Otherwise there won't be any submarines for donuts to play with anymore. Submarines should always be split off from your main naval force since they will slow down the navy and a slow navy goes straight to the scrapyard. The enemy can just fire at your navy for free while yours retreats and your navy will never be able to catch theirs and all your expensive ships can just be picked off without a fight so why are you even bothering with a navy then the best defense against submarines are naval bombers since they don't have any aa to defend themselves with and realistically they also need to surface for air every night or escort ships with that out of the way we can also talk about how naval battles work there's three lanes of combat we can see screening ships are your first line of defense when there's no screening ships anymore your capital ships will be attacked when there's no capital ships anymore your aircraft carriers will be attacked the exception to this rule are submarines and naval bombers because they can attack any lane. Which is why carriers are so strong. Subscribe for more guides like this one. Or March of the Eagles at 10k. Let's move on to ship designs. We're going to go over a lot of templates now, which we will have to do in order to talk about the compositions. I will just spit out the templates and then later on I will actually explain what each of those ships will fulfill as a role. Because otherwise things are gonna get way too confusing. I have to structure this somehow, not like my life. The carrier is very simple. You just take your biggest hull for the most speed, you take the best engine for the most speed, you strap as many of these hangars on it as you can, and then the guns are optional. You don't need to strap armor on it because number one, it's gonna make your calf slower. Naval bombers ignore armor anyway. And as I said, if your carrier is attacked, the navy is already dead anyway. You don't need extra armor on it. You should at least have 30 knots on all of your boats. Next, let's move on to the capital ships. We're going to start off with the heavy cruiser. We use one dual purpose gun and then two AAs and two heavy arms. The rest is just maxed. The super heavy battleship is... <laughs> 
more of a meme, I dare say, because as you can see, this one is very slow. It's also very expensive, but it's very fun to use. If you can get this thing into a battle, it will just shred. The problem is getting this thing into a battle. Just use two heavy guns, two uh, heavy RT and then dual purpose guns. Next, we have the battleship. We're gonna use two AA, two dual purpose and the heavy armament and the rest again, just max. Fire control is very important in general for your ships as well, because it just gives you hit chance. I usually don't build battle cruisers. If I do want heavy ships, I usually just build heavy cruisers. Next thing, we have the screens. For the destroyer, we have two very interesting designs and philosophies. We have number one, the roach. Destroyers use a 1940s hull because that's cheaper and it does increase our speed anyway. So we're just gonna use the cheaper one. This one is the cheapest destroyer you can produce. So it's just gonna soak up as much damage as possible. And if you wanted to, you could also strap radar on it and potentially sonar. You could convert it into a recon ship with this, but honestly, ah, uh, for that, I would rather use the light cruiser that we're gonna get to. But still, this is a very valid destroyer 1940 with the max engines and just one gun. Just look at this production cost, that's insane. One destroyer that makes a little bit more sense, although the roach is still pretty good, is the torpedo destroyer because that one can also deal a little bit of damage itself. If you don't want to rely on just your heavy ships, you can also build this one because it's gonna deal quite a bit of damage with all of the torpedoes that you strap on it. It's a little bit slower and also more expensive, but can still be a nice addition to a navy. If you want to balance them a little bit, you can build one of these for every three roaches, or you can just go balls to the walls with either of these designs. They are gonna perform fine enough against the AI. Now, if you come to the light cruiser, that one is pretty much similar, just a bunch of guns on it. It is much more expensive, so I do say like the torpedo destroyer is probably more worth it than this light cruiser. But with the light cruiser, you have the benefit that you only have to research one hull, so you can use heavy cruisers and light cruisers. But I prefer my light cruisers for a different role, which is one of the two screening ships that are screening ships, but you shouldn't use them as screening ships, which is the recon light cruiser. Just a bunch of air catapults for a whole 110 surface detection. And then we also have the escort destroyer, just max death charges on this thing, sonar radar so they can detect a few boats. And then these are just gonna be escorting your convoys or just raiding radars, anti-submarines. And finally, we go on to the submarines. There's the uh, basic one, which is the uh, radar, max torpedo tubes with a 1940 hull because that one is cheaper and doesn't give you speed, as well as snorkels and max engine. These are gonna be used to convoy raid. Then we have the mine layer, which I don't know why it exists. Legitimately, <laughs> mine laying is such a waste. Hey, against the eye, it's not worth it. They can grant supremacy and reduce enemy speed and also deal damage, but I would prefer to have guaranteed damage over the chance that a ship drives into a mine and takes damage. You could just do anything else with your time. A single naval bomb was probably gonna be more useful than this crap. And then we have the reconnaissance submarine, which is uh, not something that everyone gets access to, only a few nations for example, Germany with their modular, no wait, with their trade, no wait, with U-boat effort, as well as Japan gets them. I think from like a few nations get them. They're nothing super special because they are just submarines that can recon a little bit. You can use one of them in your submarine fleets for some additional detection, put fuel tanks on it for more range and I, I guess it's cool. It's just not something I really use ever. It's a very niche technology for only a couple of countries, so it's a very niche, niche thing. All right, uh, let's go on to the compositions. We do have a bunch of compositions here. Four whole compositions, which are the things that you're gonna use most of the time. We're going to start off with the strike force. The strike force is, uh, I don't wanna say simple, but um, it's something, all right? The strike force is used to decimate the enemy navy. For a surface fleet, you should have four aircraft carriers. More than four carriers will lead to over stacking issues and then they're not going to perform as well. So four aircraft carriers it is. Then we're going to use N capital ships and N times four screening ships. As you can see, we have nine battle cruisers and one BB, which means 10 capital ships. We're going to use 40 screening ships. Personal recommendation, if you do use roach destroyers, I usually put twice as many screening ships on there because the roach destroyers just die so quickly. In this case, I would use 80 roach destroyers, but it's probably overkill. It's just something I like to do when I use roach destroyers. If we were to use 20 light cruisers, we would use 40 roach destroyers. For combat, the ideal composition is three screening ships for every capital ships, but because you're gonna lose a lot of screening ships, it's recommended that you use four, and again, with the roach destroyers because they're so cheap, just 
strap more on them. But as always, against the AI, it's not such a huge deal. Like, you could probably win with just light cruisers against the AI. This strike force will be put on strike force. This means that they are gonna get out of port as soon as one of your ships detects an enemy navy. This also means they should be docked relatively close to combat. So if I were to dock them in Königsberg and I want them to fight in the North Sea, then they're gonna get out of here, jaunt over here. And by the time that they arrive in the North Sea, the battle is already over. We don't know where the enemy navy is and then they have to go back. Additionally, they are also on automatic split off disabled because you don't want your carriers to just go away and and poof, that's two years worth of construction gone. You can put on automatic reinforcement, but it's very important that you put on never repair and always engage because you know your navy is gonna win and you don't want them to disengage and then suddenly get picked off. This approach does require a bit more manual attention from you because you would have to, you know, take a look. Oh God, my capital ship's almost dead. We're gonna chill with you for a bit, you know, just put you on hold and then later on you can go in again once you're repaired. You don't have to do it, but it's recommended because it's like, you know, we're talking about the AI here, you know, like it's, it, <laughs> you can probably put this thing on do not engage and high repair priority and it's still gonna shred an enemy navy. It's not going to because do not engage means that they are not gonna do an engage, but you know, like it's, it, you know, it's, it, it, it's, it's a matter of, it's a hyperbole. It's funny. Ha! The next composition that is interesting is the recon composition. This navy is used to spot ships for your strike force. These are a couple of light cruisers. More is better, but you should not mix them in with your other ships. For that, you can use these spy classes. So, you know, okay, these are my spotting cruisers. And these should not be mixed because any other ship is going to diminish their detection stat. And their role is very simple. You're going to put them on automatic split off and do not engage because these guys are going to patrol all across the north sea and then spot enemy navies and then your strike force knows okay there is a navy and you're not gonna lose your light cruisers and they can potentially also follow them for longer again i said a couple the exact number doesn't really matter that much five is probably fine and then just use more so they can patrol more naval zones this one is the escort task force same thing as the recons the number doesn't really matter that much you're just gonna use a bunch of destroyers with depth charges you can also use any other navy as well as naval bombs for escorting but these are specialized at taking out submarines so they are perfect for escorting convoys likewise their role is on convoy escort they should be reinforced and automatic split off is also fine for them and then we have the wolf packs these are just your generic submarines with as much torpedoes as possible and then you're gonna put them over any zone that's of vital interest i really like the atlantic or the dutch east indies just to cut off the us or the rubber supply from indonesia the number for the wolf packs is around 10 you can pick between 5 and 20 it's gonna be fine but 10 is pretty much the sweet spot that you should aim for and as i said do not put these near shallow sea try to keep the efficiency at 100 percent very important damage control and fire control as well as smoke generators are the free techs that you need to research before you use your navy if you don't plan on using a navy then that's fine but if you want to use a navy and want to fight with the navy the these three techs, or I guess seven techs, are integral if you don't want to suffer damage. As for the rest of the research, pretty basic stuff. You just pick whatever you want to spec into. We do have obviously the destroyer hulls here that are interesting to get. Here the depth charges if you want escort destroyers. Same for sonar if you want escort destroyers. Cruisers will give you light and heavy cruisers. Airplane catapult if you want recon cruisers. Armor if you want to upgrade it, but against the AI, I usually do not research this. Then here the battleship line as well as super heavy battleship hulls carriers submarines and snorkels for the submarines you will get torpedoes and engines for level four so if you just want to build wolf packs you are going to use the 1940 tech and research the 1944 tech for the torpedoes and the engines and then slap them on this one the 1944 tech is still useful for all of them because of the better engines now uh, when it comes to the guns the top line is just light tech the middle line
line is for cruisers and then the bottom line is for heavy attack you just pick whatever you want to spec into and if you don't really care about cruisers then you don't really need to worry about this line this torpedo tech is only required if you want to build torpedo destroyers down here we also have buffs for submarines so if you are using wolf packs you should get these techs but you don't need to get these techs transports if you want to land somewhere the rest down here is just naval uh the mining stuff uh you can still pick the gorsing but the rest really isn't worth it when it comes to doctrines i will 100 admit i am still submarine pilled we've had the submarine bathtub meta for eight years i will just out of habit always pick trade interdiction if you want to convoy rate then this is a very good doctrine fleet in being is good if you have a big strong navy if you start as the uk for example fleet in being is very good because it just gets so many nice buffs and you just have an all-around good strike force trade interdiction is more focused on if you have a bit of a cheaper navy and then base strike is oh my god i have too much money what do i do i want to build five billion carriers my carriers are gonna decimate everything out there that's very cool for base strike so like the us japan that's usually countries that are going base strike considering i play until 1980 i guess i could spec into base strike let me just recap fleet in being is very good for a strike Strike force navy trade interdiction for a cheap navy and for raiding and base strike for the most expensive navy you can ever imagine stacked with carriers when it comes to spirits it's very simple actually we just pick instilled aggression as for the spirit of the navy it honestly depends on your goals i usually pick naval reform just because of the navy xp gain you should just switch this whenever you need to integrate the designers once you are starting to research all of your modules and then we also have destroyer and submarine research as well as repair speed this one is your late game thing but again like just pick whatever you really need at this moment naval reform is a safe pick this one is useful no matter which path you pick as for the naval command spirit this is a bit more tricky number one surface raiders is trash you don't want retreat decision chance you do have fleet speed while retreating which is good but retreat decision chance is probably one of the worst stats you can have if you want to build a strike force navy because as i said if your boats are fleeing they are just sitting ducks and if your boats are fleeing more often they are just sitting ducks more often Often, which means you're gonna take more damage. Brave Commanders is pretty cool if you wanna have a pretty big navy because of the negative retreat decision chance and the 50% critical hit chance. Efficient communications is very good for a strike force because the additional positioning means that your screens and your heavy ships will position better which will increase your screening efficiency which will lead to less damage for your capital ships and less damage for your carriers. This one is my favorite one just because it increases the consistency of my navy. Close combat if you want to go full on torpedo I guess. And night fighting is also so pretty okay it's night fighting is probably my second favorite and then brave commanders one of these three i would recommend so if you have a bit of a smaller navy if you don't have a super strike force i would probably pick night fighting i have also made a division in the air template guide which you should definitely check out and i have also linked it in the description and oh my god it's here and um wow for now, you should probably check out the air guide because there's naval bombers that you can use with your aircraft carriers. 